the screen. So uh, I, I talk about. え、マジで。ちょっと待ってよ。え、入ってるで、君たち。来たやろ。お、オッケー。So we should mind. Uh, you should change. We should change our mind so from mechanical alignment to climatic alignment. Hire n i Native alignment. No, not yet. Not yet? Okay, I'll, I'll invite you. Yeah. Okay, I now it sent. I have sent. The invitation by email. No, <laughs> not yet. Let's check your email. 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 I just sent you email invitation. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyway, so I. Okay, so we should aware of the leg is not straight. In most patients, has a constitutional valence alignment. So, anyway, so we should accept valence alignment. So, the uh, on the other hand, the TK is reconstruct uh, surgery. So we uh, reconstruct the joint line and leg alignment in TK, uh, especially in the mechanical alignment TK. And that is a completely different. For example, in the TK patient, the lateral side is disrupted and media uh, ligament and so the tissue is contracted. So to reduce it, so we need the, uh, some release of soft tissue. Once we release the soft tissue and adjust the gap, refer to the lateral ligament to make the same gap in the lateral and median. So uh, joint line can be uh, elevated. Okay, so uh, the altered joint line can cause some instability or stiffness. So uh, furthermore, uh, if we cut the tibia in a particular perpendicular to the tibia axis, so at least one joint line uh, will change. So for example, if we adjust the lateral side to cut the tibia, the media joint line should elevate. Do you understand? Because so joint line inclines three degrees in balance in the average. So if we cut perpendicular to the tibia to mechanical tibia axis, so you always experience the cutting bone thickness is thinner and uh, thicker in the left side and thinner in the media side. So maybe you are very uh, familiar to this appearance, the media lateral thick and the media uh, thin. Uh, that is uh, implies the lateral side, the joint line is not so uh, changed, but media side, joint line can elevate. And furthermore, this ligament, so, Gap is adjusted, referred to the lateral uh, lax ligament. So there are two reasons after the TK. Uh, it is quite difficult to adjust 
the joint line to the preoperative uh, pre disease one. So, so RTK is uh, furthermore, so alignment should be uh, the mechanical neutral. So there are two links. So in the TK, it's virtually impossible to restore the patient native joint line. So that is the difference. So uh, unlike the TKA, uh, UK can reduce the ligament balance and previous joint line, pre disease joint line operatively. That is the difference. So how to reproduce a normal? Uh, this is another uh, talk. So we talk about the meniscus. Meniscus. So it is impossible to restore the nature function of uh, meniscus using the artificial material because so meniscus is elastic. It can alter the ch uh, it can change its shape thickness and location. Oh, but now we can, you only you can give the plastic that is a solid, that it can't change its shape. So that is a difference. So, uh, or maybe so you already see this figure several times. So meniscus can move and change its shape and location. In the extension, Meniscus is very thin and wide and located anterior. And when deflection, the meniscus comes thicker and narrower and located posterior. So uh, due to the uh, low back motion. And so the meniscus uh, can change its shape according to the radius of the field. So in the extension, the radius is large, and in the flexion, radius radius is uh, short and small. So according to change of the morphology of the femur, the meniscus can change. But in fact, actually, it is impossible to reproduce this function using the artificial material. So. Uh, only we can do the solid material. So in the Oxford knee, uh, change the shape of femur instead of the change shape, changing shape of the belly. So uh, everyone is fixed, the solid, uh, uh, the female belly uh, is fixed, but uh, we can get the perfect conformity between Fema and bearing and bearing and tibia. So all that is uh, it is impossible to change the shape of fema. Uh, that is the innovation of this Oxford knee. So normally so fema component uh, such uh, such as TK and fixed bearing TKA, the fema component is not round scale. But multi radius in the extension in the big, uh, large, long radius and the flexion in the short radius. But in the Oxford knee, in the complete part of the sphere. So, uh, we, we change the female component the shape to sphere. So, this bearing that is shimmery meniscus. Uh, it's not necessary to change its shape. And, but location can change. So according to the movement of the femur on the tibia, a completely passive move is very. So uh, we call it this concept as fully concurrent and non contouring So uh, that means uh, any times uh, the, it provides uh, the perfect contact area, the big contact area between female and the brethren, and brethren and tibia. And the, the bearing can move completely positively. 
So uh, this is the advantage of the mobile wearing is so uh and due to the the wide contact area, so minor maralamity is accepted. So according to the minor, the primary ten degrees of moral rotation or mal alignment can be accepted in both tibia and tibia. But regarding the tibia, we should avoid the valgus placement because that can cause the fracture of valgus subsidence. So, uh, but in terms of the contact area, so a minor uh, mal alignment can be accepted. Uh, but unlike the mobile bearing, in using the fixed bearing, we uh, implant fixed bearing in a slightly beta and valgus alignment, it can cause the point loading, edge loading, that can increase the polyethylene strength wear. So, but for the fixed bearing user, the alignment is very sensitive about a mal alignment. But for the mobile user, alignment doesn't matter. We never care about alignment. Uh, the both component alignment and leg alignment. But fixed bearing user, uh, they will care about total leg alignment. It should be set up slightly better, up slightly under corrected, and uh, right position for the component and avoiding edge uh, loading uh, due to the uh, slanted implantation. So another advantage is a quite small amount of polyethylene wear. So according to the previous report, annual wear rate is 10 times smaller in the mobile wearing than in fixed wearing. And around 12% of revision case of fixed wearing is the polyethylene wear. So uh, that is the difference. But the mobile bearing can dislocate, but never uh, cause a wear. Uh, that is the difference. So uh, which do you like is the uh, the surgeon preference rather than done the patient selection. Okay. So, uh, but fixed bearings, so in a long time, so uh, there is a flow and make the dip, and the dip can catch the polyethylene and move with the female component and can cause loose. Okay, so uh, the both, I don't know, it, uh, where it's called, so uh, there's a some particle or small or polyethylene, and this uh, deep can catch the female component. Uh, there are two reasons. The small particle makes the uh, oscillizes here, and uh, this deep can catch and move with female component. That is another reason of the high frequency of losing after a uh, fixed bearing. Okay, that is the difference. So we, we should consider the difference between the fixed bearing and mobile bearings.